So are cookers, one of the newest technologies around. Maybe you've been hit by a power outage already this year, or you're just concerned about if the hurricanes will come. Are you a camper? Want to be able to cook on the trail? Are you trying to cut down your electricity bills? Or do you just want to keep the house cool through the long, hot days of the summer? All of those are good reasons for a solar cooker. Now, we're going to make one today. We've got easily available materials here. But first, we're going to show you some of the newer varieties that you can buy if you want to just go out and get one. This is one model. This is from Solar Cookers International. It's called a Cook It, and obviously we're not promoting any particular brands. These are just two of the many that are available on the market. It's adjustable, so you can move this down or set it up depending on the angle of the sun, and you just use a paper a clothespin or some kind of a clip to adjust it. You need a small pot. Because this is open and exposed to the air, you use a oven bag and you just pinch it shut with a paper clip or something like that. And while you wouldn't do this if you were cooking because these get very hot, you do need to have some kind of a rack. And I just use a couple of jar lids on the bottom to hold the pan up off the stove. But this is your stove and all you do is change the angle to follow the sun. If it's a good, hot, bright, sunny day and you put it out at 11 o'clock, you could bake brownies in here by noon or 12.30. Less sun or you have more food in here, you could be cooking in here for eight hours. Chicken and vegetables, chicken and rice, breads, you can cook just about anything in this one. And it is collapsible, it folds up. This is another commercially available one. It's also, as you see, very compact and the additional pieces fit inside. This is your cooking box. The problem with it that I find is that it's very small. It's hard to find a pan that will actually fit in there. It comes with the additional parts of the reflector, so it opens up. So you end up with a completely circular reflector system but this one works best when the sun is pretty much directly overhead and like I said there's some limitations to how much you can put in it. Now these are three different homemade solar cookers so just some ideas for what you can do yourself with easily obtainable materials. These first two have a styrofoam cooler as the base this is probably the simplest. It just has a single reflector panel to catch the sun. It has a flexible, heavy-duty plastic here to, to help hold the heat in. And I have made it with two different dowel lengths so that I can adjust it somewhat however I need to to be able to catch the rays of the sun. This one, a little bit bigger. It has four reflector panels. It has a plexiglass cover to help hold the heat in. And the base of this one is painted black to help absorb more of the heat. The third one here, the largest, is simply made with two cardboard boxes, one inside the other with styrofoam peanuts between them to help insulate the walls. It also has a plexiglass cover. And because this one is made from cardboard, I do have a small cookie sheet painted black on the bottom in there to help protect it. Now all three of these are good in that they do collapse somewhat. So this one, just fold it down. The middle one here, you need to take the plexiglass out and then the reflector just folds up and this is ready to store. This one, probably the easiest, you just take out the dowel and close the flap, but I have made a holder here to be able to store my dowels right with it, so I always have my, my height adjustment right with the cooker. So you decided you think you're gonna make a solar cooker of your own. Well, right here is everything that you're going to need. You'll need pans, one size or another. You'll need cutting equipment, an X-Acto knife, a serrated knife is good, probably some scissors. You'll need a ruler, a dowel if you make a single reflector. You'll need a couple kinds of tape. You might want some spray glue, heavy duty aluminum foil, either a flexible plastic heavy duty that can take the heat or a piece of plexiglass as your lid. 
you'll obviously need a cooler, some cardboard for a reflector, and then once you're cooking, you'll need hot pads or gloves of some sort. You'll need some kind of a rack. Depending on the model or the type that you make, you might want some oven bags and you might need some paper pin, uh, some clothes pins. But that's it. That's all the more you need. The first thing that you want to get is not your cooler. The first thing that you have to find is a pan because once you have the pan, then you can determine what size of cooler you need. It has to be something that will hold your pan. Some of these tapered coolers nowadays, they're too narrow at the bottom for a pan to sit in it. Types of pans, you want something that's going to be big enough to hold food for your family, but it needs to be dark. You want something that's lightweight, not a real heavy one, because that takes too long to heat up. And you want something with a kind of lid that will catch and drip the juices back down onto your food. Now, if you end up having to buy a silver pan or a shiny pan, lightweight is best against the kind of lid that will catch and hold the juices, but because it's silvery, we're going to need to spray paint it black. The dark pans absorb the heat. Your food will cook a lot faster. Any kind of a black spray paint, it doesn't have to be something that's special for cooking or special for high heat. All right, so we have our pan. Now, while the other one is the paint's drying, I'm going to use this one to demonstrate. What we need to do now is figure out how much of an angle can we make on this cooler. We want it at an angle to be able to catch the sun's rays. So we'll put the pan in. I'm going to turn it over so you can see a little bit better. And I'm going to go from the back here. What I want to do is leave enough space for the handle, but in this case, I'm going to leave enough space for the taller pan as well. So I can cut my, my sides down to about here. So that's, that's just about four and a half inches. So now I'm going to turn this back over and mark this at about four and a half inches down to here. And so I'm going to cut it at an angle from here down. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. And, and notice I'm cutting from the inside edge here. I'm not cutting from the back. Roughly straight across here. Okay, now some people prefer to use a serrated knife. Some people prefer to use an X-Acto. But basically what we're going to do is cut this piece of the cooler away. So I'm going to start out at least with the X-Acto knife. And this is, is just to create the, an angle to be able to better catch the sun. And there it comes. Now you obviously see all the mess that this makes. So what we're going to do to prevent all of this from, from continuing to shred is we're going to cover the edges with tape. Next, what we're going to do is line this whole thing with aluminum foil. Generally, what works best is to cover the two sides first and then use a single sheet the whole way, front, bottom, and up the back side. So we just need a piece that's wide enough. What some people like to do is use a spray glue and cover the inside with spray. Generally, I've found that um, eventually the foil is going to be torn. And if it's been glued on, it's that much harder to replace. So I generally just tape the, the edges of the foil and let it go with that. So. There are our sides covered, and you can already see how nice and reflective they are. Next, what we need to do is cover the inside. And the easiest way to measure it out to make sure that you have enough is we're just going to do that as one large piece. So we'll measure it. We'll give ourselves enough to fold over the rim, fold down a little bit on the side, and again, enough to cover the rim and to fold down some on the back side. So we'll measure out our piece. And then 
rather than trying to fold this around edges and corners, the easiest thing to do is to just lay this over. Remember, we want the shiny side out. So we're just going to fold the edges back some. So I've got one side folded. Now what I'm going to do to measure it is I want my foil to be just exactly this width. So I'll put the inside edge here right on the edge of the foil. Then I'm going to come over here again on the inside of the cavity. And right here, this is where I need to fold the, t the foil so that I'll have a strip that's just exactly this wide. Now this should be wide enough that I can lay it in. So I'll start with a little bit on the back, carefully slide it down in. We'd rather not tear it. So we're just going to work it down the back and then very carefully across the bottom. Tuck it down into the corners and fold it up over the edge. Okay, so now we've got aluminum foil, nice good reflection on all sides. What we still need to do is put a little bit of tape just down in a, a couple of spots to, to hold it in. We'll trim the front off and we'll tape it on the outsides just to, to keep it in place. But actually the last thing that we want to do is spray paint just the bottom black because that will help to hold the heat and bounce it back to the pan, to that black pan. Um, as you saw with one of the other uh, cookers that I've made, you could use a cookie sheet if you had something like that that's black already and put that in as the base. But in this size of a cooler, all we're going to do is spray paint it black. And we just want enough to be able to hold the heat. All right, so this is the cooker. Now we need to think about reflectors. Now you can do just a plain square reflector like this or you can do one at an angle, which gives you a little bit broader. This is the kind that we'll, we can use to make a four-sided reflector. But remember, even though you want this to be a little bit broader, your tabs here have to be the size that will fit down in. So this starts out the interior dimension of your stove. Now, we remember, we want the shiny side on the outside, so I need to turn it over. And I'm just going to fold the edges down. Turn this off a little bit more, and then we'll tape the edges. So there, there's our reflector. So now we're catching even more sunlight down into the interior of the cooker. Now you need to make a couple of decisions. If you have plexiglass or you want to use plexiglass, all you would need right now would be just a piece of plexiglass that's the size to cover it. And this would be one of your simplest cookers. This one is ready to go. We need a, a rack in there and the pot and we could be out cooking with this. If you don't want to cut plexiglass and you have some kind of heavy duty plastic, you can also cut a piece of plastic, that's what we have over here, just um, flexible plastic. And again, we could cut it big enough, and in this case, because it's lightweight, you want to leave enough on either side that we can use some, some thumbtacks, some push pins to hold it down, hold it in place. And the other decision that you need to make is, do you want a single reflector? or are we going to put reflectors on all four sides? Since the one that we're, going to de we're demonstrating is we're going to use all four sides, I have to cut my plastic just to the width of the cooker because the top and the bottom of the reflectors have to fit down in. So I'm going to mark this and we'll cut our strip of plastic just wide enough to fit across the space. Lay this out, and like I said, we're going to use some push pins to just to hold this in place. And you could, can keep a couple with your cooker. 
And now I need just enough on this side to give me a bit of a handle. And then when I'm cooking with it, I will actually have a couple more push pins in over here. If you don't have plexiglass or a piece of glass for the lid, you don't have a heavy duty plastic, you do have another option. You can use an oven bag. You would prepare your food, put it in the pan, put the pan into the oven bag, and what you want to do is use a clip, a paper, um, paper clip, a, a clothespin, something like that to close the bag up. That's going to help hold the heat uh, right around the pan and we can put that down into the oven and we would be ready to cook this way. This isn't quite as fast or quite as efficient because if there's a breeze, your warm air is going to be blown away, taken away, but the bag at least will help hold it in and it will cook faster than if you just put the pan in without a lid or without a bag. So moving on to making the other reflectors. This is the, the bottom part and again, this has to be just the size of the interior dimensions of your, your cooler, your cooker. Now, however, you notice I didn't cut the other two out first because this is at a diagonal, so it's not just this measurement, but we have to measure the length on the diagonal. So this is, and let me turn it around so I've got it here, this is, 10 and a half inches. So this is the length that I need the base of the two side pieces to be. So I'll come up here, right here, two and a half. The corner is going to be here. And I'll follow this one up and add two and a half inches. So this is going to be one of the side pieces. Careful with the X-Acto knife that you don't cut your fingers and you don't cut whatever is underneath it. We've cut this one. Now you see with the amount of angle that I left on the corners here, this is going to keep our reflectors pretty close together, which means that something like this, we're only going to be able to use between about 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. when the sun goes from here to the same, uh, the same angle on the other side. When the sun is too low, you're not going to be able to get much reflection in. So this, these angles, only I've only added about two and a half inches extra from the width here, I put two and a half inches extra on each side. If you want to be able to use your cooker for longer periods of time, what you need to do is make your reflectors with a wider angle. So now I've added five inches. When we connect these, you see that we have a lot wider angle here, so we're going to be able to catch the sun for a longer period of time. And this is our final step. All we need to do now is tape three of the corners. You don't want to tape the fourth corner because if you do, you're not going to be able to fold it down. And now I'm using a heavier tape. I'm, I'm using duct tape for this because these are going to get a lot more movement and these reflectors are going to be getting warmer. And once I get them basically in place, we'll go back and stabilize them with an additional piece of tape at the bottom. So we have one last connection to make and I'm simply going to put this in place over here and tape it. Now what we can do, now that we've got, them, got this in place, is I can go back and put extra tape to support it. The one last thing that you need is a rack inside. So if you have a small cake rack that fits, you can do that. Otherwise, you can just twist some jar rings together, put them in. You need something to hold your pan up just a little bit off the bottom of the cooker so that the bottom receives heat as well. 
And if you want, you can always put two little holes and a twist tie to hold that fourth corner together, but you don't want to attach it permanently. All right, so we've made our cooker. This is the one we've just finished. This is the portable collapsible one. We're gonna give you some hints on how to use them. Now I already have our painted black pot in here. Heating water will have some nice fresh hot coffee for you in just a minute. But a couple of other things. You've got to have some kind of oven mitts, hot pad holders, something. These things get very hot, up to 300 degrees if you've got bright sunlight. Another thing to be aware of just in terms of safety, when you move around in front of these cookers, and even here, I'm catching some of it, there's a lot of reflection back into your eyes. So be very careful about where you move. Some people have said, well, they're concerned about putting them outside. Aren't the neighborhood cats, dogs going to get them? Not a problem. They're plenty hot enough that these animals are not going to, to bother things. The most important thing that you need is some place where you've got free access to the sun. Depending on what you're cooking, you might only need it for two hours. You might need it for five or six hours. So in some cases, you're going to have to be there to be able to move your cooler cooker around to, to be able to follow the rays of the sun. Something like this that, um, that is wider doesn't need as much movement because it's catching rays from all directions. You don't need to worry a whole lot about the clouds. Few clouds here and there, not a problem. I've cooked rice in this when it's just overcast. It'll take longer, but you still can do it. So a few clouds wandering past is not going to bother your cooking. Okay, well, you can certainly feel the heat here. The water should be plenty hot, so we'll go ahead and make some coffee. I've already pulled the, our pins off the plastic, so we're gonna slide the plastic back on out. And make sure you use your gloves, because this is definitely hot. We'll lift out our coffee water here and see how hot it is. You can see the steam rising. Up. It's perfect, a little bit left over. So fresh hot coffee. Now obviously you can also use your solar cooker for reheating any of the canned goods in your hurricane supply, as well as making a complete meal. All right, now let's go on and make some dinner. Now we're gonna use the larger cooker here, and, and this one is a little bit different. Some of the things that you need obviously the rack, but because this one is open to all the breezes, if you don't use a bag or something to hold the heat, it's gonna take a lot longer to cook. So we'll use an oven bag, and with this, what we do is we put the rack in the bag first, then we'll put the pan in there, and then finally to close it up, you need a clothespin or a little twist tie or something to be able to pinch the bag shut once we have the pot in there. So we'll need those. Let's go ahead and what we're going to make is uh, chicken and rice and tomatoes. We'll start with a cup of quick rice. You can cook regular rice, but it's going to take a lot longer. And I'm going to use some flavored tomatoes just to add some flavor if, if it's a hurricane season and you don't necessarily have a whole lot there. Anything to add some flavor will, will be appreciated. Now, I'm going to add chicken and some peas, but what I'm going to do is pour the liquid from the, the chicken off into my cup so I know how much extra liquid I have to add. So we're using canned chicken, again, something that can come out of your hurricane supply. Although, if you have raw chicken, if you've got chicken in the freezer and you want to use it, you can certainly do that in a cooker too. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the liquid from the peas. Pour that off. And it doesn't have to be peas, any kind of vegetable that, that you prefer. So we'll stir all of that up. It looks like I just need to add a little bit of moisture. The cup of rice calls for one cup of water. So I'll add a little bit more here. Stir that up. And then finally, 
Uh, just for some extra flavor, I'm going to, in this case, use some Italian seasoning, but you could use any kind of, of uh, flavoring seasoning that you want. Put about a spoonful in there, and we're ready to go. So we'll put the lid on, and that is warm already. I'm gonna slide it into the bag. Pinch the bag shut. Now you don't want to pull it down tightly because you will notice later that this is really going to puff up. The bag is going to puff up. And then we just set it in the cooker on the rack. Since we used canned vegetables, canned meat, instant rice, this should be done in an hour to an hour and a half. Um, if we were going to use raw chicken, you'd probably need two hours, maybe two and a half. It just depends on what you have in there. So now you might notice that we've got these at a slightly different angle as the sun has moved, where I've changed these to face the sun. Probably the best and easiest way to tell that you've got it at the most direct angle possible is to look at the shadow. The smaller the shadow, the more sun is hitting directly into your cooker. So you just turn it until the shadow shrinks the most. Now this one, I just have to follow the, the sun because this is not adjustable. One of the nice things about this cooker is that it is adjustable. When the sun is high overhead, I have this panel up fairly high. If this rice were still cooking, say at 5 o'clock this evening, then what I would do is gradually move this panel down so that it's catching more of the low angle rays. But since we're cooking pretty much at midday, we're just going to leave it up and leave it, keep on cooking. Now, just a couple of things about pans. Both of the ones that we have in the cookers right now are just round casserole type pans. You can use flat pans, um, meatloaf or bread pans. The black one is much better. It's too hot even to handle. The silver one is going to reflect a lot of the heat back out. If you don't have a black pan, you can certainly spray paint one of these, obviously just the outside. And for some things, like if you want to do a nut bread, brownies, a cake, something like that, if you don't have a lid that fits over this pan, a good idea would be just take a piece of tin foil, spray paint it black, just like we did with the one pan in the cooker, and lay it over. And that will help absorb and direct more of the heat right down into your food. All right, well, you can tell the got a few clouds up there, so it's not quite as bright, but it's been an hour and a half, so our rice should be done. Now, what I'm going to do is, first of all, take the clip off, and then we're going to pull our pot out of its bag. And I can smell those seasonings already. And we'll see what our chicken and rice looks like. Oh, look at this. That rice is definitely done, nice and steamy hot. There's dinner, thanks to the sun.